All right, so now we are going to prove an if and only if theorem. Um, it's going to be very long and it's going to be complicated because there's going to be a sub proof within a sub proof and so on. Uh, let's move on. So here is the theorem that I would like to prove. It says not P and Q, if and only if, not P or not Q. Because this is a biconditional uh, sentence, uh, we first need to prove that the first part, which is not P and Q, implies the second part, which is this. And then once we prove it, then we're going to prove the second part, where this time the second part, the second section of this sentence, implies the first section of this sentence. Once we prove these two, well then, uh, by using by condition uh, property rule, we can say uh, the theorem is true. All right, so let's move, uh, let's move on. So I'm going to prove the first part first. This is a conditional sentence, so I'm going to use conditional derivation. So how do we prove them? If you remember, we assume this part is true and then show that the second part must be true as well. So my first assumption is going to be not P and Q. Remember, if this part is false, this entire conditional statement is true anyway. So therefore, we don't really worry about uh, what happens if this is false. So let's suppose it is true. All right, so once this is true, what am I going to prove? Well, I need to prove that either not P is true or not Q is true. So either one of them. All right, so how am I going to prove that? Well, direct proof could be difficult. I don't know if there is any uh, way of proving it directly, but I'm going to prove it indirectly. So that means I am going to uh, deny the conclusion, which is uh, not, not P or not Q. All right. So let's suppose this is true. So this is, oh, this is, let's write what they are. This is uh, assumption for conditional derivation. And this is assumption for indirect derivation because I am trying to get a contradiction. All right, so there you go. I have uh, this uh, statement true. Well, what am I going to do now? So if you look at this sentence uh, or statement, well, I have a statement, a sentence or another sentence, right? So, and I have a negation. So if I can create not P or not Q without negation side, uh, I will get a contradiction because otherwise there's no way, I have only one more assumption. So I, getting a contradiction with this one, uh, I mean P and Q, is more difficult because I need to prove that P is true and Q is true. Uh, so here showing this might be easier. I, I don't know. Um, let's do. So this is try and error. So I would like to uh, prove conc conclusion that P is a true statement. Under the assumption, that's important, under the assumption in line one and in line two, all right? So it may be wrong, it may be false under some other assumptions, but under these two assumptions, I'm going to prove that P is true, all right? And then hopefully we'll get a contradiction somewhere. So how am I going to uh, do that? Well, I'm going to prove it by uh, contradiction. What does that mean? I open another box, all right, in line three. I assume the negation of it. So suppose that not P is true. So this is assumption by indirect derivation. All right, if not P is true, all right, I'm trying to get something like this. I just add another uh, sentence, not P or not Q. And I know that this is true thanks to the addition rule I'm adding uh, into the uh, statement in line three. So what do I have? Well, let me just repeat. Let 
what I have in line uh, two. So I got a contradiction. All right. So I got a contradiction means what? Uh, that means this statement not p is a false statement given that assumptions in uh, line one and line two are true. Okay, so th this, is, this is very important. I know this is a, uh, uh, an assumption that might be false. Um, and uh, this is another assumption that might be false. How do I know that this contradiction, this problem, is not a, a sort of rising, uh, occurring because of this assumption? Well, so here, everything in this box is conditional on what's in this box and what's in this box. And similarly, everything in, the, in, in this box, starting in line two, is conditional on this assumption. So therefore, things are true here, conditional on these two assumptions. So I fix those as being true, all right? And then I make this assumption and see if I reach a contradiction. If I reach a contradiction, that means, given those assumptions are true, this conclusion cannot be true, all right? So therefore, three, P must be true, all right? This is why two and three are in the same um, sort of uh, uh, line. So what do I have? So I, I have P true, okay, very good. Uh, but you know what? Uh, when I compare what I have in line one, I need also the Q being true. Okay, so I'm going to do that. How? Well, I will open another new box. All right. So line, oh, this, I'm sorry, this is not line three. This is line six. So this is going to be line seven. All right. So now I mean my new conclusion is Q. This is my old conclusion. I already proved it, so I erase it. By the way, I'm going to put a cross here because now in this new box, in this new sub proof, I cannot use anything in this box. All right. What I can use line one, line two and line six only. Okay. That is very, very important because everything in this, in this box was conditional on not P being true. But I know that it is not true because I proved it. So therefore, I can't use anything inside this box. All right. So now I opened a new box in line seven. This is the conclusion I would like to prove. Um, so I, I'm going to prove it by contradiction. So. I deny my conclusion, not Q. So this is assumption for indirect derivation. All right, so once not Q is true, I'm gonna do exactly the same trick. I just add not P to this sentence. Uh, so this is addition to line seven. And then you know what? I just repeat not, not P or not Q. So this is repeat line um, 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 two. So I got a con contradiction again. So you know what? Once again, given that line one, assumption in line one, line two, and therefore line six are true, I cannot have Q being false. So Q must be true. So therefore, uh, nine, 10, line 10, Q is true. All right very well. So this conclusion is also proven. And so I can also ignore everything in this box because I can no longer use them. So keep going. Um, so I have this assumption. If this assumption is true, P must be true. Q must be true. All right. Things in those boxes are not true or not necessarily true. So but that's enough. Given that P is true and Q is true, what I can do is, let me continue here, line uh, 11, P and Q is also true by basically conjunction. Conjunction of 
statement in lines 6 and 10. Very well. Um, well, is that it? No, not it. Because let me repeat line 1. Not P and Q. So repeat line 1. Now I have the contradiction. So in fact, I can now close this box. I mean, I am closing this box, uh, starting with line 2. So therefore, uh, line 13, what I have is, uh, remember, I made this assumption and I reached a contradiction. It was assumption for indirect derivation. So therefore, under this assumption, this conclusion cannot be true. So its negation must be true. So that means not P or not Q is true. Well, thanks to my arguments, uh, in, in indirect derivation, thanks to the argument between 2 to 12. Right. Oh, I forgot to put here uh, indirect derivation arguments 3 to 5, and same here, indirect derivations, thanks to arguments eight, uh, 7 to 9, I'm sorry, and so on. So, once I have this assumption in line 1, not P and Q, I have this conclusion. So if this is true, this must be true. Voila, I have proven. Now I can, uh, I can close this entire box. So what does that mean? That means 14, I have not P and Q implies not P or not Q. All right, so that means I have proven the first uh, uh, part of my theorem. Okay, so now I need to prove the second part of my theorem. So I am going to keep this because later I am going to use the biconditional rule uh, and join, uh, sort of connect line 14 and line I don't know what number. And so I'm going to conclude that this if and only if statement is true. So now let's prove the second part. Okay. So I'm erasing. So my proof is not over, it continues. But because my board is small, I unfortunately erase all that. Okay, so now line 15. I'm going to prove this. Again, the same idea. Assume this, show that this is true. So not P or not Q is true. So I'm going to prove this is true. Again, so this is assumption for conditional derivation, all right? Um, by the way, this is uh, thanks to conditional derivations between from line 1 to 13. So what else? So this is my box. I'm going to open a new box. So this is uh, line 16. In this box, I am going to deny my conclusion. So I'm going to assume not not P and Q. So assumption for indirect derivation. So line 17, this is double negation. So P and Q must be true. Uh, double negation of line 16. Well, this is N, so P must be true. Simplification of line 17. And then uh, Q must be true. Again, simplification of line 17. All right, what do I have? Um, so I have P true, I have Q true. Very well. So um, if you look at this assumption, right, not P or not Q, I have P. So therefore, I can conclude oh, 20 um, not, so here's it. So not P or not Q is true, all right? But P is true. So if P is true, not P must be false, all right? So again, P is true, therefore not P must be false. So this part is false. 
but this argument is true so that means not q must be true so therefore line 20 says not q is true um, this is um, mtp modus tollendo ponus uh, mtp between line 15 and line uh, 18 so what do i have i have q and not q all in the same sentence i got a contradiction so therefore under this assumption this assumption cannot hold it must be false that means its negation is true so therefore line uh, 21 <clears throat> i must have p and q so you know what if this is true then not p and q must be true and hence uh, line 22 i actually close this this box again so line 22 what i have is not p or not q implies not p and q all right um by the way this is thanks to indirect derivation between line 16 to 20 and this is conditional derivation between line 15 to 21 and finally in line 23 i have this part which is the second part this which is the first part so therefore not p and q if and only if uh, not p or not q and this is thanks for uh, by condition of the sentences in line 14 and 22 that's it therefore uh, my argument is true and this is how we prove this theorem